anterior aspheric surface, and as a posterior achromatic diffractive surface with, surface with what's called an echelet feature, and also the name of the data, um, <coughs> you know, by the hydrophobic lens, with a 360 degree, degree posterior square edge, and it's a toric lens with similar powers and the cylinder powers on the lens, as you see there. The, um, the echelet design, what this is, echelet comes from French and Ulada, and it's a, it's a type of diffraction grating, and the idea is that it optimizes certain diffraction orders but suppresses others. And what it does, it elongates the focal <coughs> point. So instead of having your, um, your two focal points, you have a bifocal or multifocal lens, you have an extended range there, that's the principle. If this lens also is, or is, tries to reduce chromatic aberration. So we call chromatic aberration be for different colors at different uh, focal points, and this tries to kind of condense them all down to one focal point to, to improve the retinal image quality and reduce the visual disturbances that multifocal lenses can do produce. At Optegra, we, we looked at a retrospective study of with refractive lens exchange and cataract patients, 38 eyes of 19 patients. The mean age of patients was 64, and there were four surgeons. Preoperatively, there was a wide range of, of, of refractions, minus 14 to plus 7, and there was a neat moderate range of astigmatism. What became apparent with this lens was that it's, uh, the degree of added it is, is not, not a huge amount, it's probably about plus 2. And so, so we started doing mini monovision with the one eye, so therefore, we haven't re I haven't really put out the scope of putting down counts, I've just put out deviation from predicted post op refraction.
contrast sensitivity even better than the tetanus multifocal. And this is reflected in uh, AMO's own data. So they looked at the ASPERIC eye of achromatic technology, which is the symphony, and they looked at the ASPERIC and the spherical eye wells and looked at that the contrast sensitivity is better for the symphony lens than the monofocal lenses. Looking at uh, Optimax's data again, they then did, uh, extended the study and they looked at 95 eyes um, of the symphony and Acrodisa 98 eyes. And although the Zeiss seems to give better 2020 vision, when you combine the figures of 2025, the symphony and the Zeiss seem to give similar um, acuity results. Yeah, uncorrected near visual acuity at three months. Again, the symphony seems to give um, very similar to the Zeiss, but this is binocular, and I know that the surgeons were doing a little bit of mini monovision on this uh, with, this, with this lens. So my observations I haven't used the lens is that unfortunately I don't have intermediate vision data that wasn't captured in the, in the, um, in the data. But my patients say that the, the ability to cook work at, at arm's length distance is very good to look at a computer, to look at a computer over a colleague's shoulder if they're trying to demonstrate something. They say this is very good with this lens. The near vision is not quite good enough if I, if I, if I target hemotrophy in both eyes. But then we know that trifocal acrylisa and fine vision also give very good intermediate vision. These extended depth, depth of focus eye wells may be less sensitive to your low hyperopic outcome. So if you, if by mistake, end up with a plus one outcome, these patients still have excellent distance acuity because there's an extended depth of focus and they don't notice that. Um, and so there might be less enhancement with this lens. You have to get your optometrist who's working with you to push the plus because otherwise these, these patients will might they, they have a difficulty in determining what their optimum acuity is and they might give you a, it might appear to be a myopic outcome whereas in fact there is that they, they are they're near more near a hemotropia. As I said I have one patient with night vision disturbances and glare but no explants yet and I'm still that's still very my experience. I've had no lens decentrations or post recalcitration yet. So my recommendation to the symphony are to use the manufacturer's A constant. I found it to be very accurate. It's very easy to implant. It's like other ones we see with lenses like Technus lenses. I do target mini monovision minus half to minus one depending on the conversation I have with the patient and if the patient wants to be a vision. Uh, you have to still select your patients like a multifocal, but perhaps because dyspotopsies do occur, but my impression is that this is a, gives the patient a good quality of vision. So my question is, is this a press biopic breakthrough? Giving this lens a report card, it does reduce night vision disturbances, it does give less loss of contrast or smudge vision than sometimes some patients complain about with other multifocals. It works well with mini monovision and there's a smooth extended depth of focus. They're not the three focal points for this lens. But it could do better in that I would like a little bit more extended depth of focus and I'd like an even better reduction of night vision disturbances, which we want for all of our lenses. So it's not a breakthrough, but it's a welcome.
simple, simple things like the Jager scale. The Jager scale actually has different Jager scales, and we, and we say when the patient sees J3, well, J3 are different, different people's boards are different. And the J3 is dated, it's based on printed print, it's not based on, on, on mathematical and optical calculations. So, um, and we have no scale, no, no, no standard. And, and this is a big issue. We cannot compare, it's very difficult to compare studies, and it's very difficult to evaluate lenses because everybody claims to have a good lens based on different scales and different illuminations. Yes, I, I have a comment on this. Super question. Because, I, and I do believe I said it last year, that we should all try in, sorry, we should all try in the Presbyterian to adapt to the Salzburg charts. They have to adopt an excellent system. I believe Sully knows more about the Salzburg charts than me, but they are very coherent. They take into account, like Mark said, the illuminance. They take into account the contrast sensitivity. And if we use the same shots or whatever, we really can compare the results. So we please continue on the The Salzburg charts that uh, Weiss talked about, this the advantage here is the reading chart is standard and becomes smaller, unlike the Snellen chart, but by decimal points, and it has a standard illumination. So you can compare very easily, in a very safe way, patients before and post-op, and at different times post-op, because it's in the same, like a chamber. You are um, checking near vision the way you check visual fields. You are almost inside a chamber of controlled lighting. So you get more repeatable results post-op. But I'm not selling that. That's up to um, Hutter Grabman to sell because it's his department and the university that's selling that. 